Viewers, viewers, and YouTubers, what's up, y'all? This is G.A. Turk. So I'm out of this one because I, I wanted to focus on this artist. Uh, today, I'm bringing to you Mr. Alchemia Merkaba. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. Appreciate you having me. Thank you so much, <laughs> Welcome man. to the show. Welcome to the show. Yes, okay, yes. so, um, you know, as you guys often know, I always like to bring people to my channel who I believe should rightfully so have their own show. And Alchemia is a spirit that is uh, someone I, I really wanted you guys to uh, experience. You always have like a, um, a really deep message for uh, what's going on in the world. It's mixed with Egyptian, African theology and history. Uh, he always comes from a philosophical yet ideological perspective. And that's something that our youth do not, <laughs> do not often uh, bring to the table. So I had to let my viewers experience Alchemia, Merkaba. Okay, so let's get into it. I know that you are an artist. I know that you are a poet. I know that you rap. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not the simple stuff that uh, we hear on the radio all the time. Like I said, it has a message. Uh, first of all, let's start with your name, Alchemia. Can you tell us how did you come to that name? What does it mean? Mm -hmm. What is the historical history behind it? Okay, it's, uh, once again, yes, Alchemia, Merkaba. You can even pronounce Merkaba is in macabre, but I go by Merkaba because I want to break it down for the syllables. But let's get into alchemia. Um, you know, you go to school, whether it's high school, it can, and we learn about chemistry. So it all merged with that, you know. So chemistry, you go there and you learn about the, the table and the elements and different things and the laboratory. But really, the first laboratory is the lab of ourself. Our body is the lab. This is where the real elements even uh, come from. And so then it's kind of been whitewashed and trickled down, and now we're teaching it in school, which is cool. But it always started within, spiritually. And so we have alchemia. Chemia can be chemistry, but it's really chemia. If you take al, which is A-L, it can be E-L or A-L. That denotes power. That denotes the substance of God, like Elohim, the E-L, or Allah, A-L, Ah, Allah. Or even like angels. We got E-L on angels because it show you that it's a worker of God. And so when you have E-L or A-L, now you're dealing with the power of substance, just power. And anybody can, you can call this guy, you can call that guy, whatever. That's not why I'm merging, it's just denoting power. So that's what Al represents. Like alchemist or alchemy. It also comes from that. And then you go into Kimia. You got Kim, which means black people, black land, melanin. Just really more so the aboriginals of this earth. So it's dealing with I, the black man, the black woman, whatever. It's just really the black God, all in one. So that's oh. what alchemy means. Awesome. Uh, you're also a lover of music. Uh, you have a, uh, a radio station on uh, Facebook, so you've right. turned Facebook into your own personal morning show. Yeah. What is the name of the show? Can you tell our viewers uh, about the show? Very new. I can tell them, but I, will, I won't lie. It's, I'm merging all of it, and I'm doing it with a partner, a business partner, Erica Young. Right now, we have two. We have a late night show, and we have a morning show. The late night show, it may still be attached to our label, which is Born For This, but the morning show is probably... We're leaning more so on, because we're testing the waters, on uh, Black Sheep. Because she's an artist, I'm an artist, and not only that, we're the youngest, so, you know, uh, in our families, and just that artistry, and when sometimes you just sit alone, and you got your pencil, your pad, you got your music, so you kind of just feel like an outcast. And out of being an outcast, sometimes you're just more daring, more assertive, more, uh, rather it's introvert, but when we express, it's very powerful. So that Black Sheep, you know, it, it got some some power behind it so we link it we, we letting it merge the radio show to some power so we can hit some foreign conversation foreign topics and just really being ourselves here's a sample viewers go into that 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 course that energy of love what do you think um, DJ? i would definitely agree also can you love someone but not be in love yeah i just think to be in love mm -hmm. it's just maximizing and multiplying that love that you have for someone. You can love someone, you can love family members, you can do so much, but you know you probably won't break your back for some people. Sometimes when you're in love, you'll probably break your back. And that's the scary thing because you can be in love with someone and it not be a healthy relationship. You can be in love with somebody, it can be a beautiful relationship. I think that in love 
is just going to make you do more. Because say you love yourself. You know, I love myself. That means you just ain't going to hurt yourself. You ain't going to try to commit suicide. You want to be here. But to be in love with yourself, all oh, these talents that I got, everybody going to see it. I'm going to go, you know, that's what it is. It's like just existing. Love is just to exist. You know what I'm saying? But to be in love is but to, to be in love is to live. Yeah. It's the difference between surviving and living. And I just think that's the best way to look at to love and to be in love. That's true. I'm with that. I agree wholeheartedly. I know that you have a lot of opinions about what's going on in the world mm -hmm. today. Um, as you know, we have, you know, a very controversial uh, president that's, you know, uh, leading our country right now. One of the things that I feared the most is that, uh, not that he was straightforward and always on Twitter, was the fact that he may not be able to speak with our world leaders. That was uh, communicate effectively with our world leaders. That is one of the things that uh, scares me the most. How do you mm -hmm. feel about what's going on? You know, um, although what I do, it merge kind of because, you know, Trump is doing so much that even if you ain't deep into politics, it's affecting our life. It's, a, it's really, you know, it's like we all got to be aware. I feel like Trump is much needed in the office because a lot of people have really been um, singing cool by y'all, whether it's in their own home, but now it's like he's shaking the nation that where the nation kind of got to turn to one another and be like, okay, I can't just have kumbaya or my religion or my denomination or this and that. We all finna be in trouble if we don't all come together. And so we see that we have him and he's not good at communicating. And so it's forcing us to be good at communicating. If he can't speak with other world leaders in, in a way that they can honor it, whether they respect, whether they agree or not, they can be like, all right, we can at least, you know, hear you out. If he can't do it, and he's the chief, you know what I'm saying? He's the leader of the free world. I really feel like it's important that if he can't do it now, we have to be that voice. We really have to be the people, you know, to come together and have these emotional and tough topics and all of that and really see what we can do because we should never have somebody in the chair who's, um, I've, I've seen is, you know, the things that he's doing, it's just like out of this world is unbelievable. But then we have to look at ourselves how we got him in there, whether he paid it off or ever. But I really think it's vital because uh, I just know that since he, he ain't even been in the office for a full year, and I see so many people helping each other out, learning, sharing, and just coming together to share information and love. People are coming together like, like crazy. Yeah, yes. and it's, it's just an adverse effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess you can say that that's a good thing, but under the circumstances, it's terrible. But yeah. you, as an artist, uh, what you do is you blend uh, the good and the bad and you, yeah. you, know, you express. Uh, okay, speaking of talent and art, I know that people come to you to do body paintings. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. on top of everything else that you do, uh, body paintings. They love it. I've seen the pictures on Facebook. You do a great job. I've seen you get into some tribal stuff. Uh, and then the, the work that you've done with the females is just phenomenal. It's, it's very creative and very uh, unique. Uh, how did you get into body painting? Appreciate that, first and foremost. Like, seriously, thank you. Um, I got into it, um, I don't know, you know, canvas can only do so much when it's just a canvas. You can only take it. It's only one dimensional, it's flat. You know, it's like, I wanna paint on walls. I wanna really paint on anything. You know, I wanna paint on shoes, which I do. And so I was like, what about the human body? Mm. That way they can actually walk around. And you know, just the beauty of humans, the uh, anatomy and just like, okay, what if I drew a dragon or something, a peacock on somebody's face? It's just like, I just really wanted to, um, I realized when you when you are an artist and you are creative, there's no limit. And so I'm like, why do I just gotta have a portfolio? Mm. Why can't I just have people around me? Why can't I paint myself? Mm. And I just think that's pretty powerful to do that. And then, you know, also it's also learning because now you get to learn the human, you get to learn a new level of intimacy. Art is already intimate to me being that it's something that's very meaningful. Uh, it's very emotional, it's very spiritual, and if you can merge that with someone else who's also an artist, or at least free spirit, and then you, cre you create moments, you create magic, it's just a whole nev another level of creation rather than just um, 
a journal or a notepad. And it's live. And it's live. Yeah, it's living. It's living. It's breathing. It's alive. alive. Yes. Yes, yes. And to see your work become alive, it's just like, uh, ain't, no, ain't nothing better than that. And uh, there's a bit of artwork behind him. Um, this is all original art? Mm-hmm. Ah, yes, all right. Yes. Let's take a look at some of that original art. Who is this? What do you call this painting? This is Can you a, bring it up uh, a little closer? Sure can. Yeah, there we go. I know. That's good how that looks. Right. That's fine. All right. All right. All right. Cool, cool. Tell us about this creation. This piece was, um, I seen a, a, a photo of something and just stood out. But I didn't want to make a replica. So I took the formation of it, the, the embodiment of it, and then I made it more animated. So it can add energy, like we were saying, bringing things to life, and then also putting your own step, your own stamp on it. And so, really, this piece was a manifestation piece. I drew this piece, and this actual person has showed up in my life. Nice. And uh, that's another way that I approach art. If I want to manifest something, I actually draw it, and uh, I know the power of that. To me, when you draw something, when you draw something, it's not just pencil on paper. You actually draw it. Like when you draw blood, you take from. And so I was taking from the universe, taking from the energy of things that I desire and bringing it forth. And this is one of my uh, forms of doing so. Beautiful, beautiful work, beautiful work. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, take a second so you guys can see some of his other works as well. Uh, I want you guys to enjoy this. Okay, guys, we are back. I hope you enjoyed some of those paintings. Um, very original work, but there was one painting that he just had off to the side. And if you've been listening to Mr. Alchemia Merkaba, then you'll know that he kind of has this um, spirit of him that is absolutely of uh, Mr. Machiavelli himself, mm -hmm. Tupac. And he had a painting that he painted of Tupac, and mm -hmm. it was just off in the corner. Tell us about this. This is amazing. Um, this piece is also another one that was freestyle. Um, for anybody who's watching who's an artist, we can procrastinate like crazy. And so this, I, I painted this before I did it. Um, what was it? It was a museum. It was pancakes and booze. This is why I displayed this. And, you know, I was bringing some of my art to sell, some of it to showcase to meet people here in Houston. And I just needed to draw something that um, I cared enough to draw that would be simple, fast, but it would also express who I am. I'm a huge fan of Machiavelli, a huge fan of Tupac. I was raised on him, you know, it's like an uncle. You know, if I need some music, some, some wisdom, sometimes I just play his music. And I know a lot of people actually draw him, and it's just like, what picture have, have no one seen actually done? You know, where he's not looking at you, when he's not throwing up West Side, something noble. So uh, this one stood out because I haven't seen anybody draw this, paint this, anything of this, you know, this original piece. Then he's smoking a cigarette, he's releasing his stress. And to show you that a king, he can go through some stress, but he's strong enough to keep it going. And I honestly felt like that was his message. Through the good, through the bad, through the ups and the down, probably take a puff, whatever, whether it's weed, <laughs> cigarettes, whatever, you know what I'm saying? He found his element. My element is painting. And so sometimes when I'm stressed, I just paint. And I was stressed because, like I said, I painted this on crunch top. And mm. I still knew it was going to be something strong, represent the kingdom, mindset, and that's how this one was birthed. Thank you. Wow. I noticed that you wear stones, um, and if I'm, if I'm naming it incorrectly, please correct me because, you know, I always like being informed. Stones, um, crystals, you're right. Okay, yeah. okay, so uh, where did that come from? Where did this, this, um, 
statement come from for you? Or is it a statement? Is it What is it for you? I'm glad you asked that. For me, the statement that I'm making is really just healing myself. Mm -hmm. That's the, It's a statement to me. So do they uh, individually mean something separately? Do they do they uh, do they bring down some message for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, um, this one right here. This is soda light. This is one that I I sleep with. You know, kind of hard to sleep with this one. I have other stones, and a friend, a great friend of mine, Shakur, he made these for me. So shout out to him because he knew I needed some of these things. Um, as I'm speaking to you, I'm not the best speaker. But I speak out of love, whether it's right or wrong. I just speak because who you know who knows who needs what I'm speaking of. And I knew sometimes my throat chakra, we all have chakras, was closing up. Somebody read my cards and said, you know, you got a lot of things to say. You know, like a prophet. She said, you're going to say some things if you allow yourself. And people are going to receive it as if they're hearing the word of God themselves. And as she was telling this, she begins to tear up. And everybody around her just felt the power. And she was just going crazy. And I'm just like, okay, thank you. And I know I do have a message for family, friends, for the world. I can't even say this is the message. That is. It just, like I said, being present. And so I got this because this keeps my throat chakra open to where it helps you communicate. And so this one is this is my love right here. And this one is how how like uh, white highlight and that also helped with like psychic abilities time traveling and really just penetrating past this veil and all of these different this is amethyst um all of these stones really helped me with my art but even before it touched my art it just helped me as a young man it helped me uh deal with the struggles of life i'm not in my hometown when i'm missing family it just helped me stay strong and remember my past where are you from I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Is that where all of this came from? Deep rooted? Um, that's a good question. I would say yes and no. I think it was a it was a platform that helped me. Uh, hmm, that's a good question. Because to me, I see myself as a soul. I don't even see myself. I am a soul before I'm a body, before I'm a human, before I'm black before I'm from Omaha, before I'm here in Houston. And so this journey started other lifetimes. And the reason why I was birthed in Omaha, to me, that's significance for being in the middle of the map of the United States. And so I don't mind being the center of attention, even though as an artist, sometimes I don't want to be the center of attention. But to be dead in the middle, you know, we get a little bit of all of the energies, East Coast, North, West, South. And so me being from the Midwest, it's a lot of struggles going on in the Midwest. There's a lot of drug trafficking. It's a lot that's just going through. There's a lot of different frequencies. And um, so I think that says something. And even though I left, I'm always attached to it because I'm still attached to my family and my friends. And so this path didn't start there. It started before I even came down and, you know, before I even descended here on this earth. This path has always been going on, and I'm just really trying to get a line so, you know, my message can still be true and love. Yeah. Uh, let's backtrack a little bit. I noticed that you mentioned someone prophesied to you that you would be a great speaker and that you would have things uh, to share with uh, the world that people would want to hear. That's a huge responsibility, Mr. Alchemia. Is that something that you have grown comfortable with? Uh, are you ready for that type of responsibility? Do you feel that inside? Uh, I've been ready. I've been spiritually, I've been eager. I, I know it. Now, I think as, you know, it's different layers of ready. It's a knowing, then it's an application. I know. So whether I'm ready or not, when it's showtime, I will have to. I'm obligated, I'm responsible because certain powers, like a mother, you know, she may not be ready to have a child, but if that baby is in her, she may feel obligated and responsible. And to me, that knowing is a sense of love. And I love people, I love energies, I love a lot of different things. My love is so authentic sometimes I, you know, I can ramble just so people can honestly get what I'm saying. Now, how do I apply it? It may be through my art. It may be through speaking to you. It may be you reaching out to me to just to give me a better platform. It can be so many different ways to apply it. You mentioned something about time travel. Mm -hmm. What is your perspective on time travel? Um, 
you know, uh, we've been here before, you know, you spoke of like uh, uh, pre-life, afterlife. Mm -hmm. That's a direction that a lot of people are afraid to talk about or don't have much perspective on. Share with us. All right. Uh, well, let me start with a disclaimer because you're bringing this question to me and I have to stand in my truth, but I want to do it in the best way that you can understand, that the audience can see that it's being humble, it's being pure, but it's being myself. Uh, and I say this as a disclaimer because there's no cockiness. Because it can be bad, it can be good. I don't know how anyone else perceive it, but I, me, myself, I am a time traveler. When I meditate, I can actually leave this body. When I sleep, I leave this body. As a, and one way that really put me onto it to a whole nother frequency is when I ground. That's when you take your shoes off and walk barefooted or whatever. It's been some things that when I don't even have to apply it that way, when I can touch things, and I can actually sense and understand someone's path, whether it's their past life, whether it's their current. And it weighs on me pretty heavy sometimes because sometimes I feel the emotions. Sometimes I can actually see people who had miscarried just by shaking their hands. And it was one experience, well, it happened more than, more than once, but while I touched something, my hand stuck to it like a magnet. And I couldn't move it off. And this was probably just like a wall because, like I said, it actually happens often now. And it doesn't move. And what's happening is I'm getting a download. And I realize it's not like a magnetic force. I realize I am actually a part of that thing that I'm touching. And when I really step back and like, it's, it's like a magnet, I can't. Then I feel roots from my fingertips digging into the surface of whatever I'm touching. And then, then I looked at my hand and it just turned pitch black. And after that, zeros and ones just start traveling up, just surges, light blue surging up my arms, up my body. And I just seen a whole bunch of numbers, seeing the grid, kind of like the matrix in the best way. That's when I seen it. Sometimes I don't always see it, but I get the download and I don't let go until a knowing, like a light bulb come. And then it might be intense, it might be powerful, I might, whatever it is, I normally try to speak on it. And um, to me, that's time traveling. Because when you see the zero and the one, that's the alpha and the omega. That's the whole journey. That's the whole thread of this existence. And when you're able to touch somebody's hand and see they pass, or touch somebody's hand and see where they're going, if they're sick or how to heal, time traveling don't always have to be like, ooh, I'm in the 30s. You know what I'm saying? It don't have to be like that. And before I even start experiencing this, I thought of it like that, going through a time machine. It's just being aware of all of the frequencies, all of the energies, people curses, breaking curses, everything that surrounded someone and, and actually being able to see it in the present time. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a spiritual thing. This is just how I do it. I know some other people probably do it through other ways, but that's to me is time traveling and seeing someone's history and someone's future. Okay, guys, y'all are experiencing a real artist. Take it in, take it in. You know, you, you are aware that a lot of people may not be able to receive this message, right? But that's right. a part of your journey. Yeah, that's just part like of it. Jesus, and theirs too. Just like Jesus walking around telling people, hey, this is what's going on. Right, and right. the people not being aware of it. You mentioned the matrix. Do you feel a sense of awareness that... Um, that most people don't have. Like, for instance, just like in The Matrix, he realized that he was in something that uh, was just all he had ever known. But if he took time to become aware, then he knew that it wasn't what he had thought it was. Right. And once he woke up, he was more powerful, right, right, right. you know, uh, than he ever could have been. Do you feel that you are awake in that way? Uh, I definitely do. And like I said, I always try to do disclaimers because everybody want to be woke or everybody want to be all that. And <laughs> just on some knowledge stuff, I feel like I'm, you know, I can get some knowledge. Some, I can research, I can regurgitate, but now it's getting so personal that I can't even run from it no more. It's getting, it's getting personal where I don't have to seek anything. Only time I read or study or try to get information is only so I can communicate it. If I know something, I can't explain what I know, that's when I research. I don't do it vice versa. I don't research and believe I know it. I don't research and try to experience it. I experience it, I know it, and then how do I explain it? So then that's when I be like, okay, what do this mean? What do this symbol mean? Why do I keep seeing that? And therefore, to me, that shows me personally that when I come to here to get the information, the matrix itself, because you got to speak the same language. You know, you mentioned Jesus. He said he speak to the Jews the same way he speak to the, when he around Jews, he speak to Jews the way they speak. He around Gentiles, he speak their language. 
So I try to get the language of the matrix because to me as an artist, it's all about colors, hues, energies, shapes, numbers. That's all I know. And I'm trying to understand because I feel it. What does, why, why do I feel the number three? How do you feel a number three? How do you feel it? You can see it and you can add it up. You can measure it. But how do you feel it? Why do I feel this? What is this? To me, that's elevating outside of the matrix. And even when we call it matrix, I'm learning now to not really call it the matrix. Me speaking it as the matrix is only because I'm speaking the language of the matrix. But a matrix is a womb. But this matrix is, is so dense that it's not really a womb. A womb is something that's beautiful. A matrix is dealing with my matrix, my meaning mother, the mother's womb, and just the fabrics of what's keeping us in this womb, in this incubator. And I can't speak of the matrix as being bad when I know that's the true matrix. But even penetrating outside of that matrix is just being one with all. When you are one with all, you're no longer in the womb. You are falling out into the ether of everything. And so I do know for a fact that I'm out of this womb, out of this matrix, and not just this one that we may be discussing right now. Mm. So. The womb, the womb. You, uh, I've heard that <clears throat> you actually have information that feeds down to you, um, and it's outside of the womb, or would it be the moon? Oh, the man. moon. <laughs> yeah, the moon. Tell us about the moon and how that is mm. something for you. The moon to me represents so much. Um, I really want to know that, that just that relationship is something very intimate. I deal with a lot of lunar energy because I'm a fire sign, I, you know, so I got a lot of that raw, that fire, that energy, that. But I balance it out by getting to the to the dark side. And the dark side, people call it the dark side. They get scared. To me, that just you know, it's just to reflect people. It's just to scare people, make them go the other the opposite way. But I actually meditate underneath the moon as often as I can when the veil is the thinnest. And to me, what I have been aware of is that it's called the witch hour. A lot of things is demonized and misunderstood. And I honestly start to understand why it's like that. Because when you tell somebody, don't go there, and you got a fortune, a million dollars, and you don't want everybody to go there because people can't understand it. I understand why certain things is demonized and spooky. I understand what Michael Jackson was doing when he's doing Thriller because we're not everybody can go through it because it is a little dark, it is a little heavier, but it's up, it is more beautiful, it's more rich, more substance. That's why it's called a cult. A cult knowledge just means hidden. And that um that moon teach me the hidden knowledge of this world. And when I go out there at 3 a.m. during the witch hour, I can summon different energies. I can speak to my mother who's no longer here. And the moon has told me that she's in the moon. She's with the moon. She's that lunar energy. She's feeding me. And it's been so many times where I'm feeling sick. And I just said, I just need to find the moon. I honestly just pull up the blind and it's right there. Full moon. This has happened more than once. And it's, and it's no longer an accident, it's not a coincidence, it's like I respect the moon, so the moon isn't afraid to just be humble with me no more. It's like, alright, you want to get to know me, here I am. You want this, here I am. And it's sometimes when you tell this to people, you might seem crazy, that's why you call it a lunar tick. You know, that lunar energy can make you have a tick, and this tick is actually making your frequency align. But when so many people are off a line, and you got that tick, you just... You, you know, you're aligning and you are aware of something and you're getting information and downloads and a lot of people ain't ready for that. They can call you, you know, a lunatic. So, mm. I'll be that. <laughs> Is there anything else that you feel that you want to share with us um, as we wrap up everything? Um, I know that you have a lot of things that fall on you from the world and I notice that you pull it from the uh, universe and the energies. Um, is there something that you feel that we should know? Is there anything that you would leave us with that we can uh, vibe off of? Uh, without sounding cliche or anything, when they say love conquers all and love is the answer, that is very true. You know, that's why I like Bob Marley and a lot of people who, who prophesied or who spoke, different uh, Buddhist monks or whatever, they really went hard with love. Sometimes we misunderstand love. Sometimes 
we afraid of love. Sometimes we don't know what love is. But love truly does conquer all. That love where you just start smiling, that bliss, that energy of that. Love really conquers all. So if I wanted to say anything, it'd be that I love you. If you're watching this, whether you agree or disagree, just make sure you're filled with love because maybe you might, maybe this is just for you. And if it's not for you, still give me that love because maybe whatever you got is for me. And it doesn't matter if it's a camera, it doesn't matter we're in different states. Love conquers all because that's how we all get on that frequency. When you see somebody's face, when you see them, when you meditate or however you go about it, that visual really stains our mind. That's why propaganda and television, they want us to see a burger and now we're hungry. You don't have to be a buyer. You don't have to be near it. Just as long as you can see it. And then you put an energy behind it. And if you can see me and you put the energy of love, then I can receive it. Anything else, I'm already protecting and blocking it. So just love. Love your family. Don't be afraid to love. Don't fear love. Love doesn't hurt. Our expectations, you know, are what we think are that fear. That's what makes it hurt. But true love is going to feel good. True love is going to be like, I remember this. I really think love and our memory goes hand to hand. So that's my message. Beautiful. Um, Is there a way for the viewers to contact you if they would like to reach out and maybe, uh, you know, feed off of what you're giving us? Okay. Um. I'm actually building a website, so okay. that's the importance of this gentleman here. You know, he <laughs> reached out to me because, like, I just talked about Love Conquers All, and he's right on the frequency of what I'm trying to move on and helping me. Um, so I'm, I'll be having a website, but soon, before we even go there, I have a YouTube. It's underneath Alchemy and Merkaba. If you don't drop the name, I can feel free to go ahead and say it. It's a a l hyphen k h e m i a space m e r K-A-B-A, -A. and that is the same as my Facebook, and you can always hit me up and send me a message or whatever, Alchemy and Merkaba, and um, I'm also on Instagram, but those two sources, YouTube and Facebook, if you actually want to speak with me, and I got my art on there, it's a personal page, so I'm, Alchemy and Merkaba, that's the best way to reach me. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Alchemia Merkaba. It was such a pleasure, brother. Uh, thank you for sharing your spirit with us. Thank you. And uh, you're welcome here on the GA Turk Show at any time. All right, All right guys. Have a good one.